This video is sponsored by Tinker DIY, but more on that later. I did some research on the best and easiest engines to work on, and I kept ending up back in the same place. But first, I want you guys to guess in the comments which engine you think it is. No cheating. Let's start by saying easy to work on is subjective, as with what is the best car? Which is a question I get asked all the time. Realistically, there is no best engine. There's always something that's better than the next engine. But these are the seven things I looked at for this research of what's the best engine to work on. First is accessibility. For the engine to be easy to work on, the engine needs to be easily accessible. This makes it suitable for beginners like myself. Things like your filters, belts, plugs, and whatnot are easy to access. Simplicity of design. Modern engines have a lot of tech and sensors around it so that we can monitor and make sure that everything stays healthy. The more technology or wiring around the engine, the more tedious it can become. Availability of documentation. If there's forums and service manuals and repair guides available, this makes it that much easier to do things yourself. Imagine Legos with instructions. Now imagine Legos without instructions. It can be time consuming for most, but also fun and easy to still work on. Tool accessibility. Some engines out there require special tools to fix simple things. That doesn't make it more difficult, but unless you're a DIYer on a budget, that's where things can start to get sketchy. Time and labor. This is a big part of the subjectiveness. Some people may consider that because it takes a while to do, that it's difficult. While someone with the patience for this kind of thing, I jump in head first. DIY friendliness. This is almost like the accessibility one, but features like easily accessible oil filters, user-friendly interfaces for assessing diagnostic information, further enhance the appeal to DIY enthusiasts. Speaking of DIY enthusiasts, thank you Tinker DIY for sponsoring this video. Tinker DIY is an app that gives you instant one-on-one -on -one access with a seasoned mechanic or auto expert. You answer any automotive questions, help you fix your car problems, and even help you plan your build. Tinker DIY is available on the Apple App Store, so you can call a mechanic to see if I'm right about this best engine. Lastly is cost of parts. This isn't necessarily about the difficulty, but it can be a big deterrent if basic parts cost too much. Do you have any clues on what the engine is yet? Well, if you mention any small block V8 by GM, then you're close enough. The GM small block V8 family refers to a series of V8 engines produced by General Motors since 1955. These engines share common design principles and components, making them part of the same family. Despite variations in displacement, configuration, and specific features. Specifically, I have my eyes on the Vortec 5.3 liter and the 6 liter Vortec as a contender, but today, just the 5.3. There are way more educated people on these engines than me out there, so please drop some more knowledge in the comments about these engines to help us out. This engine so far has checked all the criteria that I've listed. They're easy to find because they're already in a lot of NPC cars out there. These are the specs for the third gen small block 5.3 liter Vortec as I build one on automation. You can find these engines in various Chevys from 1999 to 2007, such as Silverados, Tahos, and Suburbans, as well as their GM counterparts like GMC and Cadillac. This small block, also known as the LM7, offers reliable power at around 270 to 295 horsepower and 315 to 335 pound-feet of torque. The aftermarket is hefty and plentiful. Why? Because the LM7 has an iron block compared to the LS1's aluminum block. It is around 100 pounds heavier, but it can also take more of a beating. So that means NOS and even forced induction without breaking something immediately. The LM7 is also begging for a cam. And like Honda, some of GM's parts are interchangeable, making modifications easier. My goal for this channel is to do a lot of hands-on tinkering, driving, and building. And it would be awesome to buy one of these motors myself and work on it on the channel with you guys. So if you can get this channel to 20,000 subscribers, I'll inquire about buying and modifying and possibly throwing an LM7 into something. So help me help you by subscribing to this channel and sharing with your friends. And I hope you enjoy this video.